Okay. So the center one is obviously a four shot, yep. and then you guys have your two shot, and we have a two shot. Okay. So if you want to talk to your fans and stuff, use your two shot because the angle's better. Gotcha. Right now, right. everybody's looking at that three shot. Four shot. Four shot. We're kind of conjoined. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. You guys, when it comes to recording at home, our guys here are the go-to guys for everything tech. They are also the creators and hosts of the awesome web show, Voice Over Body Shop, that you can tune into live every Monday, and you better. We are so happy to get buzzed, especially with our great friends, George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Hey. Welcome, hey. you guys. Wait, I'm going to clap. Here. I'm going to clap. Oh, yeah. Golf clap. Yeah, yeah. Golf clap. <laughs> we don't want to make too much echo. Don't, don't <laughs> clap too loud or we'll hear the <laughs> echo. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Thanks for being here. We're so yeah. excited to have both of you here together. You have had us on your show, and we said, you know what? Let's get our act together and have these guys on. So welcome to the cottage. And Thank welcome you. To Beautiful new studio here. Thank Very you. Very impressive. Really beautiful. You guys clean up nicely. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And Dan, I, would, I don't think I've ever seen you look this pretty. Uh, you know, I shower once a week whether I need it or not. Well, you did yes. today, yeah. that, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And That's it's good. towards the end of the week, so but still looking good. Yeah, um, totally, man. So do you guys feel weird not having headphones? And Well, he's stuff? the only one that wears the headphones. Yeah. yeah. I like not having headphones on right now. Yeah. I, it, he does. He's very is, happy. It, it is not pleasant having to wear them all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, listen, man, I'm going to get right into it because yeah. the thing sure. is, is you guys have been doing um, VOBS now for how long? Seven and a half years. Seven, Seven and, and a half, half years. Yeah. And I, Stacy and I respect the heck out of you guys yeah. because we know exactly what you have to do to put a show like that on mm -hmm. week after week. Um, and so there's immense respect goes out to you guys for, for just not even taking breaks, man. I know that you do here and there, but it's like, you guys are like on it and that's mm -hmm. really, really cool. Live and you're working really, really hard. And every time I watch the show, Stacy and I are like, nobody's asking them any questions about themselves. Yeah. <laughs> How rude. And I really want to know about Dan's this and, and, and yeah. George's that. So today we're going to get to know Dan and George mm -hmm. on a personal level as well as on a professional level. If yeah. that's this okay. is your life. Is that okay? Is anybody coming in to, I don't know? <laughs> no, <laughs> not <Hi. mention. laughs> So the first thing that I would like to ask you guys is, um, how did the two of you individually, of course, how did you find your way into the voiceover industry? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I I was in the radio during the 80s okay. and early 90s. You and were in the radio? I was in a radio. Like, the little <laughs> door on the back and I was just sort of <laughs> going the there. You're the guy. Yeah, 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 the guy. I, I was the guy. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I worked my way up from, you know, on-air jock into management, uh, yeah. production director, making commercials, thousands of commercials. And uh, and then I, radio and I sort of departed ways about 1992, mm -hmm. and uh, I sold life insurance for a while. Had an uncle who says, "I got a great business for you." Yeah, uh, did that for about five years, and then my mother-in-law said, "You know, you're really good at history. Maybe you should go back to school and get your you know your teaching degree." Mm -hmm. Wow. So I did. I went back to. Uh, so he did. I did. He's, I, he's a good I, son. I listen, to, I listen to my mother-in-law. He takes direction well. Very yeah, good. That's that's very important. Foreshadowing. Uh, yeah, and uh, I went back to school, got my teaching certificate in uh, social studies education, mm -hmm. and immediately got a job right out of right out of school. Of course, that was. 42 years old at the time. Right. You know, this is kind of weird, you know, taking somebody who'd been in the private sector for 15, 20 years and then throwing them into a Marxist bureaucracy. It oh, was, yeah. It, was, it wasn't a great mix. Yeah. yeah. I loved teaching. It was great, uh, you know, seeing kids' lights go on, you know, especially I taught 11th and 9th grade. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they, one of the things they, they said is, well, we'll hire you, but one of the reasons we want to hire you, we see you were in broadcasting and we built... Uh, a closed circuit television system in the school, and we need to set up the studio. Can you do that? And I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. <laughs> Within two weeks, I had them up running with a TV studio. Right. Wow. Uh, we did it on stage because the lighting was there and stuff. And uh, but I was in that school for about two years, 
it's a long story that I can't go into what happened there. And then for I for legal reasons. No, not legal reasons. It's just <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's a fascinating two part episode. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. I mean, Dan, what part? did you do at that school? I, I didn't do anything. <laughs> okay, but it was it had to do with an assassination in my neighborhood. And oh it, my goodness. Yeah. It, all right, we're gonna. I, we're, right. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna. Um, uh, yeah. It, not that I was involved in it, but I was a right. witness. Oh my God! The, an assassination that I wasn't involved. The rumors are flying. Yeah, no, no, I had I had nothing to do. I was the story, sick. the plot thickens. Yeah, no, I was yes. sitting in my living room when when everything happened there. But um, and then somebody said, "Hey, you have a really nice voice." Yeah, well, no, they, what they said is, is <laughs> you have a very nice house, and the school I was working in was basically in the dirt. It was yeah. way out, mm. in the, and so they didn't like the uppity person coming in there. And I was sort of forced out of there by before I got tenure. And then I worked at an inner ring uh, suburban school and that was like jumping out of the frying pan into the yeah. bonfire. Yeah. And, and then education and I parted ways. So I found myself at home uh, raising my, my two sons. Suddenly I was the chauffeur. And while I was finishing my master's degree, um, I, I was given a project by the head of the history department at Buffalo State College, who had been the head of the history department at Buffalo State College when I got my, my bachelor's degree in yeah. 1980. Never mm -hmm. burn bridges. Never. Oh, not yeah. with this guy. Oh, yeah. you know? yes. And he's like, I got a project for you. And he, it was about, uh, they had all this film uh, of an interview with this jazz musician by the name of Alan Tinney. And the story is, is that he wasn't just this guy who played jazz piano in Buffalo, he was he was the founder of bebop jazz. He, yeah. he was in the original cast of Porgy and Bess. Mm. And, uh, and I knew this guy. And, you know, but the thing was is that it was all on video. And I was able to take the video, which was hard to edit because I couldn't find any stock footage of Harlem in the 1920s and 30s. And uh, I'm like, wait a second, just one morning I'm like, it's an audio document. It's a radio documentary. Took the audio off the video. Ed was able to edit it that way. And this was like 2002. And mm -hmm. it was, digital you know, recording was around. And, and I hadn't really experienced it. I learned with a reel-to-reel -reel and a razor blade and a grease pencil. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I made this documentary. And it played on the radio. And you know, I, got, I got my master's degree. And it just suddenly dawned on me, wait a second, if I can record in my basement, in my, the, my little office down there, you know, record my voice and edit other things, shouldn't I be able to do what I spent a career doing, making commercials? Mm. And so I typed in voiceover. And like when the door to Dorothy's house goes from <laughs> black and white I was yeah. suddenly this world. The color we, came into yeah. the world. It, it, it suddenly there was this entire fresh world out there that yeah. I hadn't really realized was there. But then again, nobody had. There was just a few people getting into right, it. Right. And you know, from there, I just started. You know, I got on, on you know on, on some of the pay to plays and mm -hmm. built a business from there. Mm -hmm. How's that for a roundabout story? That's awesome. That's good, man. Yeah, that's, that's good. Awesome. But hey, man, at least you found your way there. Well, and yeah. then you moved out here. A lot of people here. still are wondering, what the yeah. hell's a voiceover? That's yeah. right. Um, so you left the balmy upstate New York winters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, I understand those well. Yeah. Um, and you moved to L.A. Yeah, we had a lot of good reasons for doing it. We had five reasons for moving to L.A. Number one. Mm, well, number one is my, my younger son, Jacob, is a very talented animator. Mm -hmm. uh, he also has Asperger's syndrome, very high-functioning. Yeah. And... Uh, my wife Marcy and I were looking to get out of Buffalo. You know, I mean, it's it's an okay place. It got better since we left, but for young people, and uh, and my mother lives in Orange, so it's like maybe we should go out there. And then we met a friend from San Diego who's a psychiatrist in San Diego. He goes, oh, I know this school in Sherman Oaks mm -hmm. uh, called Exceptional Minds that teaches people with autistic spectrum disorders who are good at animation and digital special effects. Wow. And it's uh, set up by industry people and a working Hollywood studio, and That's they certify cool. them in these things. Mm -hmm. And so he came out for a, uh, a workshop out here, and I'm like driving around the valley, feeling, where should we buy a house here? <laughs> and we found the house that had the studio in it. Yeah. And uh, so we bought the house, and um, not knowing if Jacob would get into the school or not, and he went for his interview, and you know the, the executive director was like, "Oh yeah, he's ready." You know, I mean, he was he was producing his own cartoons on on, oh, that's cool. on yeah, YouTube yeah. for for a so couple talented, of years, yeah. and uh, so we got in, and 
you know, and we settled in here, and uh, it's it's been interesting. I moved out here because this is the center of our world as far as yeah. voiceover is yeah. concerned. It really is. And uh, working on home studios, there's a lot more opportunity here. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Over, which was Absolutely. fascinating. That, that is yeah. for sure. And we're going to get more yeah, into that. We are. Yeah. But yeah. George, the East how the did West. you now find the, your way into the West. VO? The mm. West. Because, the East West. You, no, I mean, well, I'm not going to put any words in your mouth. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> We're going to guess. We're well, going to try to see if... Hopefully you didn't commit any murders or anything like that guy over there. and had to, I hadn't heard no. that story. Uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> younger, so I'll keep it shorter. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have an audio... I've always liked audio. I have a music background. Yeah. And I studied music uh, engineering in a roundabout way at Virginia Tech. When I graduated, I was looking for a business to get into. Do you play? I was, do you play? I do. I played trumpet. That's what I studied oh, cool, through man. grade school, college. Still have a horn. Do you sing? I can carry a tune. Okay. Uh, but can I you don't sing s- while playing the trumpet, George? <laughs> Why don't you sing a little something for us, George? That is like. Uh, <laughs> George. I, I can't do the sing while you play the flute trick. Like, <laughs> yeah. like they hey, do hey, the mama, set the wheel. <laughs> oh, the wrong, wrong kind of. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I had, I had the music background, the engineering background, and all that, and I studied at a, I interned at a studio in Philly called Sigma Sound, which was this renowned studio. I mean, the roots were downstairs recording all the time. Mm. The walls were coated in platinum and gold, OJs, Jackson 5, everything. But I realized that's not where I wanted to be. It was really, uh, you know, crazy hours. Mm-hmm. I was just interning. Yeah. And when I found out that even the guys that are being paid to be there were being paid ridiculously <laughs> low rates yeah. and working 80 hours a week, I was like, okay. And it just wasn't, it wasn't going anywhere. So my dad and I just came up with the idea, let's turn this old RV we have into a studio. So I had a camper. I turned into a recording studio. That Just was to clarify, fun... your dad is not Bo Weaver. My dad is not <laughs> Bo Weaver, but not Bo Weaver. he could have been. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I am like, kind of like the lost son of Bo Weaver yeah. in a yes, weird way. Like we that. love Bo Weaver. Um, <laughs> But I had that little stint going. And then I just, I spent years dabbling in every kind of audio, doing mm-hmm. sound system installs for aerobic studios, working at a music store where my dad was manage, managing, all that. Then through another connection, I got to do some radio engineering and I got to work at WYSP in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. which is now WIP. I thought you were gonna say WKRP Cincinnati. Oh, dude, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> And I got YSP and got to do all the Eagles football games for oh, cool. like three years, right after 9-11. That's mm. when that all started. Right. And uh, in that process, I got to meet a producer at the station named Howard Parker, who had just moved up to New York City, and he needed a voiceover studio. So my friend at WYSP, Lane Massey, amazing guy, still doing it, still working. Yeah. Right on, Lane. Yeah. He got me connected to Howard. And then from there, voiceover kind of took a back seat. I didn't really have a connection much deeper than that. But when I moved out here in 2004, Howard caught wind of that I was out here and he said, hey, can you help me out with my studio now that you're out here? Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, man, of course. Yeah. And I call him client zero because from him, that one guy, yeah. yes. he told his management, Jason Mark's talent, Jason told a couple people, Rick Wasserman and yep. Melissa Disney and mm-hmm. Rick Robles. Yep. And that just, and it grew from there. And, and then I met Don LaFontaine and that yep. really cemented like, yeah. okay, this is something I should be doing yeah. for a living. Yeah, you know? that is really, isn't that yeah. weird, man? Yeah. How yeah. you're living your life, you're doing all this crazy stuff like you, Dan, right? <laughs> and, 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 and you think that you're on, a, on, a, on the right path or a path that is going to lead you to yeah. somewhere. And it really yeah. doesn't. It's like something else happens and yeah. bam. I didn't even met. I mean, I was a production yeah. sound mixer yeah. too for the first three years. But I, I, always, was here. I always like to say, you know, you're only one or two decisions away from a very different life. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. when you Absolutely. think, when you backwards think about where you are and how you got here, you think, oh, if I had gone there or there, yeah. maybe. Okay. So, how did you guys meet? Uh, it yeah. Ha- it happened at Voice 2008. Okay. At uh, the Century Plaza in Century City. Uh huh. Um, Voice is voice over interactive, the, the creative. Experience Inter- yeah. voiceover yeah. international creative experience. This is James Alberger and, and Penny Ashire. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So uh, I had been to the first one in Vegas. You weren't at the one in Vegas. Nope. No. I was at the seven. One. The one where you got a picture with Donald Fontaine. Fontaine. Right. Mm. Which he never. And got. I didn't. They had to even you did his studio, George. It's okay. Never got a picture with him. His yeah. pictures of Don LaFontaine are right here. Yeah. Yes. George, yeah. you did his studio. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Way uh, to move on. 
anyway, I was, I, I, I was an ambassador, you know, oh. you know, it, it, it was, which is essentially full paid attendance, but working. Oh, the I thought you had like time. a sash. But working or the entire time. Did you time. have a sash? No, kind? no, we had oh, t-shirts. It's disappointing. Yeah. That said right. ambassador. Don't hit your mic. Yeah, I'm I just sorry. hit mine too. Hi, <laughs> we're new. Yeah, they're experts. We're, we're sound experts. You, you can tell. <laughs> well, they don't normally have lavaliers. They normally yeah, have yeah, like shotguns. Do have the, yeah. the, the voiceover mic? Okay, there. and then what? Uh, and then um, so. My job was initially be Jim's assistant, uh -huh. you know, and do all his audio when he was speaking to people, and and then I I I would drift it into producing each room. Uh -huh. You know, I was assigned you know when somebody was a speaker, go in there, make sure the mics mics were working, uh, make sure their projector was working, that the engineer was there, and mm. everything was set up to do uh, the session, and in walks Mr. Whitham, and why were you there? I was a, I was a fill-in. I had never done any live presentations before. You were that. interning again, George. I was trial by fire. That's <laughs> that's my life. Trial by fire. Just throw in, throw them in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was I was a fill-in. I don't remember who, but I think two weeks before the event, they asked me if I wanted to do it. So, so do I mean, you remember like your first exchange? What oh, you, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. He starts sh running through his slides to yeah. check it out. I'm running through the. Lines of lines and lines of bullet points in all my slides. Right. Oh, okay. You know, he's That's a very good. technical guy. Mm -hmm. And yeah. remember, this was a lot of newbies. Yeah. You know, yeah. People right. who were really just starting to examine but I the voiceover. That. You, but you he didn't knew know. That. I knew that. Oh. He didn't know. He's like, looking at these George slides. George is in the dark. Going, George is going to start talking about, like, you know. He's like, like That's gonna, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, huh? Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I graciously walked over there and I said, do you know who you're talking to? This is this is a this is an audience. And he of, thought you were talking about yourself. <laughs> no, no, no. Do you know who you're talking to? Do you know who you're you talking to, yeah. son? And and I said, you're really gonna go way over people's heads with this. Because yeah. you were showing them ISDN stuff. And, right. You know, I was showing them like the, and, the, the complete voiceover studio. Right. Oh. Like, the nuts, right. you know? And yeah, you know, and I had been yeah. teaching people how to put them in their closet and stuff yeah. like right, that. Right, right. And uh, so we ran through the slide presentation. I said, pull that one. Hold that one. Okay. That's that. Oh, that's going to be. I said, if you do this, they will kiss your feet at the end. And I think I literally said that. <laughs> and uh, and he, he it, we dumbed down the entire the entire presentation, and um, and they were kissing his feet at the end. Mm. I'm glad you it went over that well. Day. Yeah, yeah, it went over extremely. That's well. cool, man. And uh, and then I was sort of following you around a little bit because you had that. A VO to go thing with the uh, the uh, oh the portable the VO port kit the portable VO kit thing yeah. I was shilling. Yeah. So you felt a a kinship. We definitely. Felt so that. at yeah. what at what point yeah. did you guys say, hey, let's do a show together? Well, from that, opposite coasts yeah. <laughs> at well, the time. Right. Well, that right. was in two thousand eight. Yeah. And we didn't start the show till two thousand eleven. Mm -hmm. Two thousand eleven. Yeah. So. We just stayed in touch over the years. Yeah. And we did a couple webinars together, and yeah, uh, you know that sort of thing. But we would, you know, because we were working with people's home studios, yeah. you know, we would say, hey, let's talk. We and we, right. and it was like sharing notes and, right. you know, stories. It's, yeah, it's just, we you know, Yeah, well, mostly. Yes. Yeah. And uh, behind closed yeah, doors. Yeah, but like voice actors are always talking about here's my, here's my process and here's how I do this mm -hmm. business thing. You know, we were talking about what's this equipment? How do we use that? A lot about recording technology. And I can't remember why it was that we decided, why don't we do a podcast? And this is, this was eight years ago. Yeah. And we thought maybe people would want to actually listen to us talk so, about it. So, so first, was, just audio? Yeah. That was the yeah. idea. It was going to be an audio show. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but the live thing, for me, was a big deal. Yeah. Because I didn't want to have to do what you guys do. Which right. Just edit. <laughs> just edit. So. Yeah. yeah. Actually, what it was was... See if I can. You just like to sweat in the moment more than you do, yeah. George. <laughs> it was when we were at Voice 2012. Yeah. And we were, and they put us in booths next to each other. Yeah. And you and I were trying to fix somebody's computer. And we looked up and there was a crowd there watching us. How do you mm. do this? And we're like, okay. So we came up with the, the thing that when, when Dan and George were talking voiceover technology, people listen. Nice. Right. And, yes. that's, and that's really where we're yeah. like, well, maybe people will want to listen. And then I can't remember why it was we decided to do video. 
Because and they, so that well, was we wanted, for people that don't know that was East West Audio Body right, Shop. Right, I was still you in were Buffalo. on the East Coast. George was on the West, right. and so yeah. you guys mm-hmm. were by coastal. We wanted doing to do a show. live show, but there was no proper live audio streaming platform. Right. 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 There was, of course, other things for video. So yeah. I was like, well, we'll just do audio, but we'll just have a graphic on the screen. Oh, well, why don't we just turn on our cameras? Web, like, right. webcams, yeah. You got webcams. So it, yeah. it started out isn't right it, out of the gate. Isn't it amazing how when you started eWebs to, and just how the technology has shifted Evolved. and evolved? Oh, and we've it's lived every right? second of it, yeah. Joy, oh boy. I know. Yeah. You know. I think, George, you told me once that during the filming of your shows, not one time has there ever not been some like weird glitch. If a show there. goes through without a single problem, it's we get miracle. to the end and we're like, get in the bunker, people. What happened? How did that happen? Get in the bunker. The world is ending. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. it's, I mean, I really, seriously, we always, I mean, we give you That's such hysterical. kudos for that because that is a Herculean feat yeah. to do yeah. that each, each week. It was, so, it was the live thing, you know, yeah. car talk. Yeah. Remember Car Talk? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They yeah. geek out about cars yeah. and they were yeah. funny. So and, and we wanted to keep it. Funny. Yeah. We wanted what? to be the Car Talk of home voiceover studios. Well, yeah. and, and it's great. Yeah. But what what made you want to do it? Like, obviously, you guys know about this, but what made you want to I, do well, it? Well, self promotion, of course. Yeah, well, that well, was shameless self promotion. Oh. <laughs> we, we wanted to make sure the people knew that, that we were be available. Your next show. About, uh, you know, that. We were the guys that understood what a home voiceover studio right. was because we had right. worked on more than anybody else around. Exactly. And it's a very unique uh, environment. Yeah. And uh, so we wanted people to do it right. Yeah. And, you know, I, we did it to make money doing our jobs, but, you know, we never we were thought tired of, of yeah. a lot of misinformation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Tons yes. and going out on forums Still, and chat rooms. So we were much. so frustrated with mm-hmm. wrong information. Yeah. Like, yeah. We got it. We got to do something. Well, yeah. and, and I want to throw in here, you'll see the lower third. Um, George Widom's site is George the dot tech, George mm-hmm. the tech. And um, Dan is homevoiceoverstudio.com. So you guys can check out more about their bells and whistles there. So as fellow content creators, what are some of the challenges that you guys encounter having a digital brand? I'm... You know, not necessarily, I mean, yes, the, the week to week, but like, what are some things that you guys really, that take your time and your energy doing your show? Uh, well, we, we, we decided to divide and conquer. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are very specific things that we do. And we actually, we, one of the things is, you know, by doing a show like this, you can't do it yourself. Yeah. Uh, you've got to have other qualified people that believe in what you're doing, or at least want to get paid to believe what mm-hmm. you're doing. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we uh, we decided one we needed it. once we started doing the show in L.A. Uh, and it wasn't just me sitting at my desk and George sitting yeah. at his desk on our webcam staring into it, and then oh let's go to a commercial and he would he was doing all the switching and all yes. the audio and yes. stuff. I know. And um, yeah, because you were you were you got to be in yeah. in, in his uh, his office there. And uh, so once we got to LA, we, I was like, we really need to have a floor director mm-hmm. and somebody who can, somebody who's worked in the station and was the floor director for a news crew. Uh, you know, Grace under fire. Yeah. yeah. So, can somebody, deal with problems. Right. Yeah. Somebody who knew that, okay, this has to go over there. That's got to go over there. Yeah. And we, you know, and I'm good at hiring people. And I threw it out on Craigslist and we hired, we hired Andrew, who was, who was great. Sloppy sometimes, but... <laughs> You know, we love him. Yeah, he he's funny. The reference he's you slumming want? it over on the Dan, yeah. you know Andrew's gonna see this, right? Oh, I know. Dan, right. you know we're rolling, right? I okay, know. Just Absolutely. Check. Don't cut yeah. that out. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, no. You hire be. him. He's actually very good. He's <laughs> now now he's working full time for for CBS. And he's he's a PA on uh, Late Show with uh, James Corden. Yeah. Nice. Oh, very yeah, cool. He's doing but, all right. he was, yeah, but he was he's just doing. But that's that. the thing. You hire a great guy. And yeah. then you're they're like, gone. Yeah. and yeah. then they're gone because yeah. you know yeah. they move. Of on. course, move sure. on. absolutely. Yeah. And then we had to hire. Uh, then we had to replace him when he he went full time with James Corden, and I did the same thing. Put it out on Craigslist, and same qualifications. And we found Sue, who's our current uh, technical director, awesome. and her job was to be mom, and say, okay, it's five o'clock. You got to do this. You got to do that. You know, and then really key, you know. Key into what we're doing and how we do it, and and be able to adapt because we're doing a live show. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and that's that was a big challenge getting that together. Yeah. Um, now let me ask you something. Do yeah. you guys, the two of you, because you're doing a show, 
you agree on everything or do you ever have any disagreements about, no, well, let's not do that or let's not, oh, we no, can't no, talk no. about I mean, that? We, we disagree on a bunch of things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we disagree, I mean, we'll, we don't disagree on what we should do the show about because right. I yeah. pretty much leave it up to Dan for the most part mm-hmm. as like creative mind behind the show, uh-huh. creative director of the show. Um, I feel like I'm more like the support, the color man and then the yep. tech support guy to keep the show in the air. But more and more as the show evolves, I'm becoming less, you know, uh, relied upon for the technology of the show, which is what I wanted it. I wanted to completely want to always have to be yeah. the yeah. only guy yeah. knows how the show works. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I'm getting to be a little bit more involved in, in the creative side of it. But I, I, from, it's two main things that are the difficulties. One is keeping the show on the air, mm-hmm. dealing with random problems that happen <clears throat> and just Keeping fresh content and just having something new to talk yeah. about yeah. Yeah. every week. You know, when you have a guest, that's a built-in new thing. That's mm-hmm. so the second half of the show, Dan he gets his questions. That's he deals with that. The first half, what are we going to talk about? Yeah. Who, 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 can we get questions? Yeah, you know, uh, what tech news should I bring up? And, and which is frankly, usually about two minutes. Sometimes the top it's, yeah, sometimes it's just like boom. Okay, what are you going to talk week? about? I'm like, yeah, um, yeah. oh, yeah. Well, there was, yeah. well, I read this article, yeah. dude. I can feel you there because when we started doing Vio Buzz Weekly, I started doing we started doing uh, tip of the week, and we had the graphic that went yes. Yes. tip of the week, right? And after about like the tenth one, I'm like, that's it. I'm done with tips. Like, I'm over if it. you want tips, you go watch their show. You realize that you have to do that every day. Oh my week. gosh! Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, to, and and then you have people going like, well, you know, actually the uh, the blah, blah, sure and they're contradicting that. what yes. you're, you're. Yeah, yeah. No, it I didn't has a life do that. of its own in the comments yeah. and yeah. all totally. that. Totally. So we moved in other directions. Okay. So <laughs> speaking of tech. Yeah. Um, are there any pieces of gear right now that you're really loving? Um, and are there any that you think are overselling and underdelivering? Good question. That's an Ooh. excellent question. Wow. It's one that you know, we discuss constantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you're always finding the new stuff. You know, I'm, I'm demoing stuff now, too, for a, a website that uh, we've started called voiceovergear.com. Uh-huh. And I'm, I'm demoing and reviewing certain gear. But our, my philosophy on gear might be a little bit different from his because he works with... I mean, I'm working with a lot of voice actors who do need some slightly higher-end gear. Right. right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll go right out of the gate by saying the most revolutionary piece of gear for home voiceover studios that I'm dealing with, dealing with and setting up is is the uh, Universal Audio Apollo yeah. because mm-hmm. while it's totally overkill for many of you out there, probably most I'm telling of you, <laughs> it's pretty overkill. But mm-hmm. for folks that are doing uh, you know production ready voice work, where they're doing live stream on Source Connect, IPDTL, yeah. ISDN, and there's an expectation that the audio that's going to the other end is kind of like already seasoned up a bit. Yeah. yeah. It's it's amazing. Yeah. I, mean, it, I it, love mine. It does. You guys use it. It's a, we're using it literally right now. You're yeah. Well, yeah. We're it. literally it's being it's yeah. used be, being used live right now yeah. with preamp in it. Yes. The box box. The built in right. preamp. So each one of us has a box box preamp on our on yeah. our on yes. us. Yes, that would be like right. That would cost eighteen thousand dollars. Eighteen thousand dollars. If we had to do it the but traditional way. one way. plug-in in this yeah. Yeah, totally. it, is, it is revolutionary. And the thing that makes it really awesome for what I do is the fact that I can set it up and tweak it remotely. Yeah. You know, and then it like, can pretty much stay. Yeah I, yeah. I I log in on someone's computer. I remote access the screen. Mm-hmm. We source connect. I listen to them do their reads like you would if you're coaching. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I'm on their computer screen and tweaking knobs. And wow. I couldn't do that with anything that easily before. Yeah. Yeah. It just yeah. is a game changer. Yeah. I know that word is overused, but yeah. it really has been a Yeah, that's really Is there really anything cool. that you think is kind of hyped up that isn't as great as, as it says it is? Um, I don't know. Some of the plugins, people go berserk over all the plugin packages that yeah. are out mm-hmm. there. And, yeah. You know, um, Man, what, there's what? Uh, there's one plugin that I just have to mention because yeah. I use it every day of my life, and it still it's every day it still boggles my mind that I can do what I can do with this plugin, and it's Isotope RX7. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, incredible. Are oh, you using the new the new new one now? 
Well, the thing is, because some people don't really understand like the things that you could do, but especially if you're at home, but it has a voice denoise. That's very, very yes. good. Plugin yeah. that literally, if you're recording and your AC's on because if you forgot to turn it off or you just didn't want to turn it off, <laughs> once yeah. you're done doing your file, you just go voicey noise and <laughs> gone. Anything that is Pretty, in your voice is just yeah. gone. And no art, no swishy, weird artifact. No, nothing. Yeah. Automatically yeah. just gone. Those guys are mad scientists. You know, before you had to like learn the eraser. noise and yeah. then it would take that uh -huh. out. Now it's just like it. It just voice it. denoise. Mm -hmm. But you've got to have somebody yeah. who knows how to use it set True. it up for you because some, yes. yeah i mean you've got to you have to have some knowledge of what it's doing yes and understand and your ear for it and yeah. an ear for like it, which people is, will do these things but they're monitoring back through you know some speakers mm -hmm. in a noisy room they can't even hear if it's working noise. or not yeah, right. Right. they don't know if there's right. problems because they don't know what to listen for yeah. you know so their plugins are amazing, but you have to, you still have to use your ears to really know what they're doing and how to get them yeah. to do the yeah. right. Yeah. All right. So that concludes our part one with uh, Dan and George. And uh, we're going to be back next week for part two. Yeah. So don't miss don't it. Don't miss it. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voice of a demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.